days all along, some things will never change. The lonely loner seems to free his mind at night. What's up guys and welcome to your sixth Java tutorial. In this episode we're going to be going over how to get user input with the scanner class. Some people are going to argue that the buffered reader is better. I feel that the scanner class is much easier to implement for beginners, so if I have time in this episode, I'll be going over buffered reader. But for now, the important one is just getting the scanner class. And let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we need to do is we need to declare our data type, and the data type is type scanner. So we are going to create a scanner data type, now we need to name it. And the most basic names that are used are keyboard or input, but you can use whatever you want. And we're going to set this equal to new scanner. And we'll get into what this is for at a later point, but for now just go with it and system in. And that's going to create our scanner class. Now if I move away, these are going to turn red. And that's because we have and we don't have access to this class right now. So generally at the top, you sometimes even the bottom, you will type import so we can import the class where this method is located and we will import java.util.scanner. And if you don't know where exactly this is, but you are need to import something, um, Eclipse and NetBeans both have a useful function where you right click on them and this one's fix imports I believe Eclipse is something along those lines it'll just be import and then the class and this one pops up with whichever one you want to but Eclipse just does a java.util.star which means it's implementing all of the classes in that area. But we only need scanner. The rest of it's kind of overkill for what we're doing. And then we're going to have a system.out.println. And let's just say, hello, what's your name? And then we will make a string to hold the variable and we'll call it name. And we're going to set this equal to keyboard. And then we're going to put a period. And this is going to bring up a bunch of options that we can choose. Um, a couple of them, they're all going to be next, but there's different types. As you can see, next is just going to go whatever input continues until a space next line is going to take the entire next line. Um, there's integer, next int, and next double. There's every single data type that you can become standard with Java that you can use. What we're going to do is we're just going to do next line. So we're going to ask for the user's name, and when we do that, we need to print it back out to them. So system.out.println, and we're going to be like, welcome and then name. So when we run this, it'll prompt for the user's name. And after that it says welcome Jester. So now that we've got the basics down, let's go ahead and write a program that's going to be asking for input on change, like amount of change to be input and it'll output the ideal um, amount of change to be given like quarters, dimes, nickels, and pennies. So since we have those four different things we need to, we need to create four, well first we need to create a scanner. And then we need to create at least four different integer types one for quarters, for the whole thing amount of quarters, and we could do these all on one line, but that's a bad practice to get into, so we're just going to go one like this. Let's give them their, each their own line. 
And now we need to have one for our initial amount. And then we need one after we get rid for our remainder to hold the amount. So now we're going to do a system.out.print line to get the amount of change. And so just between 1 and 99 to get optimal change. Okay. So then we need to set initial amount equal to keyboard dot next int. And we're gonna set amount equal to that too. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do amount is e no we're gonna do quarters, sorry. Quarters is equal to the amount divided by 25. So that's just how many times 25 cents goes into that amount. And then we're going to set amount equal to the amount remainder 25. And we're going to do the same thing for the dimes. Except 10. And then the same thing for nickels. And then we're just going to set pennies equal to amount. Because the whatever's left over doesn't need to be divided because you'll just get the same number. And then we will print out our results. And then we're going to do the nickels and the pennies. And then we're going to end that with a colon. And all of these are not on the same line, but they will be concatenated together because of the plus signs. So let's go ahead and run that and see if we get a correct output. And 41 is going to have one of each, so we got quarters, one, dimes, one, nickels, one, pennies, one. And if we wanted to, we can set up so that these are each on their own line. So then we would do a plus and then a new line character. And we can do that for each of them except for the pennies. And what this does is it just moves everything down. It's the same thing as just doing another system.out.print line. It just keeps it all in one place if you need to. And we'll do 41 again. So we get quarters, one, dimes, one, nickels, one, pennies, and one. So that is how you get user input using the scanner class. Thanks for watching, guys.